Today, we're gonna be building a raised bed, just like this one, but here. But before we do any building, we're gonna have to clear all this stuff out. This raised bed we're going to install today is available on Amazon and I got it for $40 and they also have other sizes and colors available. It's pretty easy to assemble and you don't need any tools although a drill will definitely speed up the process. If you need one of these or any other product from today's video, I'll leave the links in the video description below or you can use your phone's camera to scan the QR code on screen. What I love most about these raised beds is that they're made out of metal and come with a protective layer of plastic, which makes them much more durable than wood. I learned the hard way that wood doesn't last very long at all here in my swamp. The supervisors came outside to give me their seal of approval and we're done with the easy part in under half an hour. Now, we need to mark the perimeter of the planter and then we'll dig the surface of the soil to make sure the planter sits one or two inches below the ground. This way, it won't move and none of the substrate we'll use for planting the cacti will drain out when it rains. It's also good to dig the old soil to make sure it's not too compacted for the roots of our new plants. We're going to try to place the two planters as close together as possible to prevent leaving any gaps where leaves from surrounding trees could accumulate, which would attract pests. The garden in my house, like most in South Florida, has a slight slope to prevent flooding. So the left side of the planter needs to be a little deeper than the right side in order to keep it level. The measuring app on your iPhone is really handy for checking that everything is nice and level. It's possible that some of these trichocereus could survive if planted directly in the ground. But with the amount of rain we get year round here in South Florida, it's better to be safe and avoid rot issues. That's why it's good to use a partly mineral soil mix and raise the plant's roots as we're doing with these planters to further improve drainage. The substrate or soil we'll be using today is 50% mineral and especially made for trichocereus or echinopsis I guess, though I refuse to call them that. And you can find it on my website eastcoastcamanchaca.com or by scanning the QR code on screen with your phone. When filling a planter like this, it's easier to fill it halfway with soil, place the plants where you want them, and then fill in the rest of the planter. All these plants were just cuttings two months ago, and I experimented with rooting them. I planted some in 20% mineral substrate, others in 100% mineral, and others in 80% mineral. And honestly, I didn't see much of a difference in root growth. So I'll keep using 100% mineral for rooting since it greatly reduces the chances of fungus and pests here where the humidity is incredibly high. When planting them, I only disturbed the roots of the cuttings in 20% mineral mix to ensure they didn't retain too much organic material around their roots. Generally, I try to disturb the roots of a new cactus as little as possible because if they get damaged, the plant can go into shock and stop growing. A very important factor to consider when growing cacti in general is ventilation and it's even more important when planting in the ground where plants will tend to stay in the same location. In this case the wind flows through the planter in this direction so we should plant the cacti in diagonal rows so that no plant blocks the airflow and ventilation of another. Before we finish filling the planter with substrate we need to add a few more elements that will make a big difference in how the planter looks and how the plants grow. First, we're going to add some fertilizers to help these cuttings produce new roots and avoid transplant shock. You can find all the products we're using by scanning the QR code on the screen. 
Next, I'm going to share a lazy gardener's trick. If you're like me and you hate pulling weeds, you can prevent them by covering the entire surface of the planter with cardboard. This will prevent any seed from the neighboring trees or from the birds above from germinating in your brand new raised bed. So save those Amazon boxes. Finally, we're going to add a couple of more elements that will completely change the look of the planter. This is a silk flower, or amor de un rato as they call it in Mexico. Portulaca grandiflora for the experts is native to Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. It's edible and produces many flowers throughout the year, and it comes available in many different colors. These plants do really well in full sun and rocky soils, which makes them great companions for cacti. We're just missing one more element to make our planter look more realistic and natural. I made this rock pot a few months ago, but now I need the rocks so we'll have to sacrifice it. Remember the rocks should be partially buried so they look more natural. This Disco Cactus Horstii is more of an experiment because I'm not sure if it'll survive here with all the rain in Miami, but we're gonna give it a try. Since we're planting late in the summer and the sun is already very intense, we're gonna cover these plants in the afternoons for two to three weeks. I use mosquito net because it's cheap here in South Florida, but you can definitely also use shade cloth. And if you want to avoid this process altogether, you can plant early in the spring when the sun isn't as strong. If you found this video helpful, it would mean the world if you hit the like button and subscribe so I can see you on the next one.